double glazing up here, you know, Shunny. Ah, we're only kidding you. Ha ha! Back on the Isle of Mull. Got like another big job to do here. <sighs> so this is what's called a bossy. So these bossies. of people just living a subsistence lifestyle living in these bodies on black Sums of money was made in rent, uh, but then the wool trade collapsed. So they could bring more. A lot of the there weren't as much rent coming in off these sheep farms, uh, and then these lands were derelict again. So the the poor folk asked the lairds to come if they can come back on these old settlements that are dotted along the cliff edges. Um, but the, the lairds said no uh, because you know, times and times of good for the wool trade might come again. So there's a massive uprising, people died left, right and centre and then the, uh, the local folk across all these islands came to the, the clan leaders and they started like, getting a bit shirty in the a few people started like, getting, getting stabbed for country from around here. So what the local lairds did, they were together and they prepared for a lot of these, these poor folk to live in a massive migration. So they went off to America. Australia, into Europe, off the lands, so that the, the lairds could concentrate on getting this money back into the estates. Then obviously the English come along with the rest of his history. So, so what we've got here is a uh, dilapidated, nowhere near as dilapidated as some of the other houses on the island. Um, Bothy, so the client uh, wants to use this as like a party place and somewhere for the rest of the night. So we're just going to give it a new lease of life. And hopefully for another 200 years, uh, parties and uh, dry nights can be had in this uh, this dwelling. So, Seashells and they burnt the seashells because all seashells, yeah, seashell, seashells. all seashells are is calcium carbonate, it's acting the same limestone. So they were burning a kill, and you can get your uh, 
calcium oxide once that's burned for an extended amount of time and then that calcium oxide slaked uh, into like a usable form of lime and that was uh, mixed with the beach sand this close volcanic beach sand here made into a lime water and these, these granite blocks This particular phase, we're going to break out all the line pointing uh, back to the original stone work, and we're going to come back in February once the temperature so is barely come to the frosty weather in here. So really, potentially, we could work right through uh, this one mold because we don't get any of the, the colder temperatures when we get back in Lancashire. Uh, but we, because of work schedules, we're coming back in February. I'm going to back point it and then I'm going to put a finish point on my on it and it'll be all sound for another couple of hundred years. Good dog. It's a dog's life in here. Cushed it. So, so that's uh, that side. Uh, so we're on, on the east side because the nasty weather always comes in from the east. But at some point, does uh, turf because you've got that mass so it warms up so any heat on the inside uh, will stay in the building more than with the tin sheets but uh, as you can see here there's water dripping down off this turf coming down the wall which isn't a problem with the, uh, the lime water because it will soak up that water and then when there's some water comes uh, it'll expel that water uh, so we're going to lime point everything here I don't know how much you can see with uh, the um, the lack of light, but we'll see what's going on. So we've got like a little uh, a little mezzanine area for storage, some old bits of stuff. You can see how old this is because it's all the horse-drawn uh, um, furniture, I think it was called. Uh, you dress the horses up into pull your tracks up, pull your peat down off the hill to burn. And we've got what we've got here is. Uh, I think this is a Charlton wood warm stove. So this is from 1972, I think they started bringing these out. So this is like a 50 year old stove. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, clean it all up. Um, we've got some new fire rope to go in it, some new fire bricks, and we're gonna uh, reinstall it as a functional uh, stove. We're gonna put a flue liner in, cap it off properly, get everything up to standards, get it ricking and then perhaps back in in February when we come back we might be stopping in here because we'll have a nice warm stove to keep this this wonderful little dwelling toasty warm so we'll uh, we'll crack on um, and we'll, we'll we'll drop in as the job progresses and see show you how we're getting on right day two so I have to make an apology now because yesterday 
I might as well have been on Jura speaking to you because you couldn't hear nothing with the wind. So, uh, excuse me for making out like you're some kind of like um, old old uh, dodderer with that poor of hearing, but you probably can't hear because of the wind. It's a bit less wind today though. So day two, and it looks like the the, the English have been here sacking the old houses again, doesn't it? So all these boards that have come off are all rotten. So what we've had to do is nip up. We had a, a four hour round trip to the builders merchants. So we had to get some new sacking boards. Uh, so these six by ones, same as what's come off. And then when we stripped the roof off, see the old roof trusses, a lot of them perished. But there's not, uh, that's only the surface that's damaged. The actual structural timber is still sound. So what we've done is we've braced it with some free material. So I'm just it in, and notch it. Uh, and then we're going to nail the new sarking boards down to the uh, new free material. So what we're going to do is we're just going to work down to the bottom of the roof. And then we'll be back tomorrow and we can get some uh, roofing sheets on. Odds and ladies, we're back on Mull and I'm still shouting here because I don't know if you can hear me. The wind's still blowing. Uh, so it's a Sunday. It's a day of rest, but not for us because we're still back on the Bothy. Uh, so I don't think you saw yesterday when we stripped this side. It's exactly the same as the front, the bottom half of the roof. Um, all the sacking boards at the bottom have rotted. So you can see where we placed them in. Exactly the same as the other side. We braced it with the three platoons. We've run out of 3 by 2 so this is the most sarking that we can do. So, uh, over here. Right down. So this is the original eave space, where the wind was blowing under into the building. Cold, no good, don't want it. So what we've done uh, is we've built up um, with some sand and cement, some uh, walling work just either side of the uh, the trusses and then we've sat some mortar on top of that stonework and then we've screwed the sarking boards down uh, so that's going to reduce the amount of draft getting into the building now i know i know you like uh building proficionados amongst you but like you haven't put your dpm under it that timber's going to be rotting uh so we're up on the island mall we're 39 miles away from the nearest builders merchants so we just have to make do with what we've got. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to run the risk. I'm going to build on top of that timber without any DPM. Uh, it's done a bit. It'll do a better job than the previous attempt. Uh, right. So that's that. Oh yeah. So we'll show you how we screw it down. So we've just built this stonework. So what we've done. Normally you nail the sarking boards down, uh, but these these bottom course. I'm going to screw it down. Let's see why. Find the screw. Before I screw that down, I'm just going to give it some fairy taps with the hammer. You see that mortar moving then? So that's screwed down nice and tight. You can see there how the mortar's squelched up over the uh, stonework. So we've got a seal under there now. Not a perfect seal, it won't do for a passive house, but it'll do for a boffy on the edge of a cliff. So we'll just put another screw in there. You can see there again, it dipped it up. So, I've done a lot of walling in the career. Um, and this, uh, you, you say, it looks like you've tried dressing a pig up in a silk gown. Terrific, it's sloppy, it's nasty, but it's done the purpose. So, if we go around the other side, we did, did this exactly the same on the other side. So, we'll go and see what we've done now. So it's exactly the same. If you, I don't know if you better see, but under there, it's nice and sealed. The motor's gone off nicely. So what we can do now, we can go along with the mortar bit. Because this cement hasn't fully cured yet. So we can just dress this up. We've already broken out this wall of the lime mortar. So when we come back in spring to point everything up, we can point all that up as well. But you'd never know. Uh, 
there that it's been cement, quite the cement marketing. That's that, a little bit more. Same as everything we're pointing to after that nice square edge. We can get a decent key in for our mortar. Break that out. So that's what it'll look like when I've gone along and done the whole lot. So that's that. So this, this side's ready for some um, tin sheets now. Uh, what else have we done? Oh, I'll tell you what happened yesterday, yeah? So we're miles away from any, anywhere. Um, and the client brought uh, a lady up um, from the Isle of Sky Weavers. Uh, and 13 years since, so I was, I was talking codswallop when I said this was done in the 70s. Because her husband put the original turf on, the, not the original, because that was 200 years ago. 13 years ago, he re-roofed it and put the turf on. Uh, so it's lasted 13 years. So I'm hoping that this will last a bit longer than 13 years. Um, but the most fascinating bit was she started weaving in this boffy. So she used to, they used to be like the, the farm labourers on the, uh, the actual farm. And then in her spare time, she had a pedal loom and she we she wore the first fabric in here so you can go on you can go online now to uh, uh have a google of the isle of sky weavers and you can see uh, just where she's come to now incredible work but it all started in this bothy so on another well, i would say because it winds no wind here so a real fascinating little uh little uh morsel of information that she gave us was that um when people used to live in here, and they had the small holdings, the crofting sort of lifestyle, um, they, had, they had to give gifts to the fairies uh, in return for prosperity um, and, and good, good living, I guess. Uh, so these are the Western Isles. So this is a, this is a land of folklore and fable, um, legends and mysteries. Uh, so the, um, the story that she told us is, yeah, we'll just come around here and have a look, we'll show you. Hundred years ago, before the age of like chat GP, GPT and Google searches, uh, if your cow was in like milky pen, you wouldn't have a clue that it you wouldn't feed enough dry matter or uh, it was in a protein going to the, the cow. Maybe you look across uh, Hamish McTavish down there, with his prize winning Highland cow that gives like three gallon of milk a day, his big buxom wife, and she's got seven fat kids as well. You'd be wondering what's going on. Now they live towards the Fort War. I guess they didn't have enough milk in the milk dish, 